Hello gang and welcome to the channel that is Jono's Graveyard Jaunts. Today we're going to be talking about an amazing rock and blues guitarist who was an integral part of the superb rock and blues band entitled Free. And like so many of his era, he was taken away from us far too soon and would have no doubt gone on to carve his name into the annals of rock and roll guitar playing history had he lived beyond his extremely young years of just 25 when he sadly passed away. And the person we're going to be talking about today is a man by the name of Paul Kossoff. Paul Kossoff was born on the 14th of September 1950 in Hampstead, North London, and he was the son of Margaret Jenkins and David Kossoff. Now Kossoff was from a very interesting and diversely talented family. For example, his father was the actor David Kossoff, his uncle was the broadcaster Alan Keith, and he was also the cousin of the judge Brian Keith and the model Linda Keith. Aged nine years old, Paul Kossoff started taking classical guitar lessons with Blanche Munro, and this continued until he was 15 years old. And in December of 1965, he saw Eric Clapton with John Mayall's Blues Breakers at the refectory Golders Green in northwest London. Now this encounter inspired Kossoff to purchase a Gibson Les Paul guitar and during 1966 Kossoff worked as a junior salesman at Selma's Music Shop in Charing Cross Road, London. Now the Gibson Les Paul guitar gives a very full, rich, creamy sound rather than the more raucous sound of the Fender Stratocaster. And if you listen to the guitar by Kossoff on the track Fire and Water from the album of the same name, you can hear the Gibson Les Paul guitar sound very distinctly. Kossoff also received lessons from the session guitarist Colin Falconer who worked in the guitars department at Selma's Music Shop also. In 1966 Kossoff joined the Chicago style blues band Black Cat Bones and the band played with touring blues piano player champion Jack Dupree often supporting Fleetwood Mac and other gigs with Fleetwood Mac co-founder Peter Green. Kossoff's bandmate in Black Cat Bones was the drummer Simon Kirk and the two went on to play on champion Jack Dupree's April 1968 album entitled When You Feel the Feeling You Was Feeling. In April of 1968, Kossoff and Kirk teamed up with Paul Rogers on vocals and Andy Fraser on bass to form the band Free. And they in turn toured for two years, during which they recorded two albums, Tons of Sobs in 1968, and free in 1969. And both albums showcased the blend's blues and soul influenced style, a style that was in contrast to some of the more progressive and heavy counterparts at the time. <clears throat> free became renowned for their live shows and non stop touring. However, their studio albums did not sell very well until their third album, Fire and Water, featured a massive hit, All Right Now. And this song helped secure them a place at the Isle of Wight Festival in 1970, where they played to 600,000 people. And in the early 1970s, Free became one of the biggest selling blues rock groups. However, after the release of the next album, Highway, in 1970, and its relatively poor sales, band pressures led to a split. The live album Free Live was recorded in 1970, and released in 1971 as a farewell record. Kossoff and Kirk teamed up with Texan keyboard player John Rabbit Bundrick and Japanese bass player Tetsu Yamuchi to release the 1971 album Kossoff, Kirk, Tetsu and Rabbit. Rogers and Fraser pursued unsuccessful solo projects. Now Free reformed and released the album Free at Last in 1972 and following its release Fraser decided he had had enough and quit to form the band Sharks. Now, Free drafted Tetsu and Rabbit for the album Heartbreaker in 1973, after which the group disbanded. And after Free, Rogers and Kirk went on to form the successful group Bad Company. And Kossoff in turn released a solo album, Backstreet Crawler. He then accompanied John Martin on a 1975 tour. Kossoff then assembled a group called Backstreet Collar, where it released two albums the band plays on in 1975 and Second Street in 1976. And recordings from one of the band's UK concerts in 1975 were first released in 1983 
on that album live at Croydon Fairfield Halls. Kossoff's guitar playing this time was also in much demand for a session work and he contributed solos on several albums. Kossoff used drugs from the age of 15 and Simon Kirk said, and I quote, he clearly had a predisposition. Kossoff used mandrax among other drugs and Paul Kossoff, Paul Rogers said about Kossoff, he was very healthy and playing well in 1973, although this was often disputed. But that he wonders about the company that Kossoff was keeping and he felt that Kossoff was just too sensitive for this world. And there's a very interesting comparison here with Nick Drake, whose sisters Gabrielle Drake said about Nick that he was born with his skin too few. And Kossoff, like Drake, was a very fragile soul. And interestingly, he went on to tour with Nick Drake's Island record label mate, John Martin, in 1975, one year after Nick Drake's death. Now, Kossoff's drug use made him unreliable in latter stages of free. And Andy Fraser noted, and I quote, he felt Im intimidated by those other guitarists. And when people began speaking of him in terms of Clapton and so on, it frightened him. Drugs were a defense, his excuse. Kossoff's unhappiness following the breakup of Free and his drug addictions contributed to a drastic decline in his health. And in a BBC website page commemorating the 1970 death of Jimi Hendrix, Simon Kirk said that Kossoff idolised Hendrix and never really recovered from his death. Now Kossoff himself died on a flight from Los Angeles to New York City on the 19th of March 1976 from a pulmonary embolism after a blood clot in his leg moved to his lung whilst touring America with his band Backstreet Crawler. The lifeless body of X3 now Backstreet Crawler guitarist Paul Kossoff had been discovered slumped in the bathroom. And at some point during the flight, Kossoff had visited the toilet and never came back. And he was just 25 years old. His body was returned to England and cremated at Golders Green Crematorium in North West London. And his epitaph in the summer house there reads, all right now. Now with regard to Paul Kossoff's legacy, one of his signature guitars, a 1957 Fender Stratocaster, was bought and sold after his death by English guitarist Dave Murray, of the English heavy metal band Iron Maiden, who in turn used it from 1978 until 1990. And in 2012, one of his most famous and iconic guitars, a 1959 Gibson Les Paul, was recreated and made into a limited edition reissue by Gibson and named the Paul Kossoff 1959 Les Paul Standard. In December 2015, Bonham was listed for auction a Gibson Les Paul Standard owned by Kossoff from 1970 to 1976. And in April of 2017, Guitar Magazine featured the strip Gibson Les Paul that Kossoff played at the Isle of Wight Festival in 1970. Kossoff sold the guitar to Mike Gooch and in May 1994, it sold for £12,000 at Christie's. Now, 40 years after his death, Kossoff music remains frozen in time. Albums such as Freeze, Fire and Water, and the hits Wishing Well and All Right Now have argue, arguably grown better with age. And at the heart of that appeal is Paul Rogers' voice and Paul Kossoff's spare, soulful guitar playing. Eric Clapton, Peter Green, Brian May and Joe Bonamassa are just some of those who paid homage to Paul Kossoff and his sound. <laughs> 